Today I want to talk about patrolling your defensive perimeter in an SHTF situation. And by your defensive perimeter, I mean your homestead perimeter. Now you see here I have a neighbor, a good neighbor. But in an SHTF situation, either he's going to be there or he's going to be gone. And if he's gone, I may have to push my defensive perimeter out past my land and onto his. If he's here, then I may want to coordinate my patrolling with him. Depending on your relationship with your neighbor, you may want to patrol together. Now there's several purposes for the patrol of the defensive perimeter. One is to look for any kind of enemy probing. And when I say enemy, I mean anybody who might want to take what's yours. Whether it be a total breakdown of law and order or just a slow, subtle um, slide of law and order into uh, anarchy. Either way, you may have to do your own 911 response. So it'd be nice to know if somebody is probing your area to see what you've got. Another purpose of the patrol is to remain familiar with the terrain uh, on your perimeter. That way by daily patrolling, by varying your patrols on time, you get to see it. You see the land and how it's laid out. You get to see if something's been disturbed. You're just intimately familiar with how everything looks and you'll know if somebody's been messing around. While on patrol, you want to check any of the gear that you have out. You want to check your outbuildings. They probably need to remain locked and you want to make sure that those locks are not compromised. And if you have any access points, you want to keep them locked and you want to make sure they haven't been breached. You say, well, why would you have this access point? Well, sure, it's a weak spot in my defensive perimeter, but it's also an entrance and an exit for me. And I may be conducting my patrols from this entrance. How often a patrol should be conducted is really going to depend on your situation. I would think daily would be a good standard, maybe a minimum. It's also going to depend on how much land you have to patrol and how many people you have. And there's a problem there. If you have lots of land, but you don't have a lot of people, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to need to bring people in. But that's, that's a whole different conversation but it's definitely going to figure in how much land you've got to patrol and how many people you have to patrol because those people are also going to have to be doing the chores and the work that puts food on the table. If at all possible, you want to have somebody in overwatch of you while you patrol. And what that means is somebody is on higher ground back inside the perimeter Hopefully with binos, with an alarm system, and maybe even a long gun. And they're watching you. And if anything happens to you while you're on patrol, they're going to be alert to it. You want to identify the places on your perimeter from which you can observe farther than, um, than normal. For instance, here I'm able to see across the bayou. I can see the house on the other side of the bayou. Can't quite see the bridge. But it's real important to identify those places and then maybe, you know, have some binos with you. Now, as for what to wear uh, while patrolling your perimeter, that all depends on your weapon system. And most likely it's going to be some long gun or it's going to be a shotgun. 
and you know you don't have to go with your full, full battle rattle inside your perimeter you want to go with something uh, that has the essentials but nothing more you're going to be patrolling this perimeter every day and if the uh, the threat level rises you may be patrolling several times a day you may be patrolling as part of your daily work because remember in SHTF we got to make a living we've got to be uh, growing we've got to be handling some livestock hopefully we've got to be scraping out a living so I like um, a kind of minimalist thing either a chest rig or a vest like this one here I like this Blackhawk vest and um, it's set up, it was, you know, originally designed for M16 pouches, carries six of them. However, by using these cards, you can turn it in to a, a shotgun vest really easy. And it does a great job of that, and that's, that's one reason I really like it. Now, it doesn't carry a lot of gear, but it'll carry what you need. You know, if you're using uh, some sort of little radio comm, it'll carry that. And, of course, everybody's got to have their backup whistle, right? And then maybe a tourniquet. You don't need a lot more. I try to keep a, some type of pocket knife on, on all my gear just so there's something there. But uh, a rig like this is really good. If you have a vehicle, um, if you're doing any kind of vehicle-borne uh, perimeter patrolling, um, maybe you're using an ATV, I don't know, that this will also be good for that because it's real easy to uh, enter and egress a vehicle wearing a vest like this. Even more minimalist would be the chest rig. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, think of an apron, a tactical apron on, on steroids. And as you can see, this chest rig is set up for shotgun, but once again, it's very easy to uh, change it over since it's a Molly chest rig. I can replace the shotgun pouches with uh, M16 pouches and very easily turn it into a long gun um, a carrier. Uh, also, you want to do the same kind of thing. You want to carry your, your comm, maybe uh, also the whistle, maybe um, a tourniquet, but not much more. I mean, we're on the defensive perimeter. Unless you're Richie Rich and you've got 40 acres, um, this would probably be enough. And, and if you are Richie Rich, God bless you, and you have that 40 acres, God bless you, then really your defensive perimeter patrol is going to be more of a um, patrolling, um, a defensive patrolling in depth, and and you are going to be carrying more, and hopefully you are going vehicle borne, because that's quite a bit of patrolling to do.